I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be here, uh, for the opportunity to be part of this. Uh, so this is a joint work with Samara Lima uh, from Florianopolis. And um, so the title is about uh, for backwards splitting multi-term composed convex optimization and so on. But I, I'm going to talk about maximum monotron operators, prox uh, uh, proximal point methods, and uh, inexact proximal point methods and some, and some contributions that we have in, the, in, the, in this direction. Okay. And so I know here. I know that we all know about this, but just to fix the ideas and notation, let, let's start with something very simple. So this is a, a, a composed convex optimization problem. You want to minimize a f plus phi, and f is good, and it's just convex, differentiable, and, le and Lipschitz continuous. And this phi is uh, just convex, uh, it's like convex proper, closed, and uh, with an easily computer resolvent or proximity operator. It means that we, we, we know how to solve this, this problem uh, and, uh, at each iteration, let's say, if we want to iterate this. And this, of course, has a lot of applications. There's problems. This phi is, in general, some regularization and so on. So we know, we know the, all of this. And of course, when this phi is the indicator function of some closed convex set, this proximity operator is the, the, the projection onto the set. And the four backward is uh, like is uh, very popular algorithm for solving this problem. We perform a four step, <coughs> like a gradient step, and this uh, this backward step is like a projection. And when 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 the, the phi is the indicator function of c, this is the the, the projection. <coughs> okay, but now we want to consider something different, like uh, the, it's similar, but the function is the sum of uh, many of this composed structure. So we have to minimize, we, we want to minimize the sum of fi plus phi i when fi is convex, uh, uh, differentiable, Lipschitz continuous, and this phi i is uh, proper closed convex with a easy computer resolver. Okay. And um, what we want to do is like a forward backward, but for each of this, uh, of this. Uh, uh, elements like phi i plus fi plus uh, phi i and in parallel. Okay, so there are interesting applications of this uh, framework and uh, uh, for instance in the paper by He, Eugene, and Dobsky, or Renes, Hugh, and Walter Wien recently. And uh, of course you want to do monotonic uh, uh, inclusions and uh, we want to look at this problem as a, a monotonic inclusion problem. So this is the first order optimality condition. And of course, we need some regularity assumption, like uh, qualification condition. But we, we want to look at the problem as this to find a zero of the sum of this uh, of this uh, maximal monotonic operators Ti, and each Ti is like a gradient of f plus uh, the subdifferential phi phi i. So this is somehow related to the talk of uh, Patrick Johnston and, and the work with the uh, Jonathan X thing. Okay, so what, what I'm going to now do now is like for uh, proximal point methods, inexact methods. We want to combine inexact methods and um, some splitting strategy. In this case, the Spinger, uh, which Rockefeller uh, talked about yesterday. Okay, mentioned. And so, if uh, if you want to find a zero of a maximum monotonic operator, let's consider general maximum monotonic operator t. This is very abstract, okay? But uh, it can be the sub. Uh, the differential of a convex function of some set of point operator or some variation on inequality. But in the case that we don't know how to compute the resolvent, if you want to compute the resolvent, you just iterate and the, you, you, you get the proximal point method. But you can, in, in the case you don't know how to compute the resolvent, Rockefeller proposed this. Uh, we need an error criterion, and Rockefeller proposed this error criterion. You can, uh, you, 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 you can make an error or like uh, computing exactly this zk, but it, the error must be summable. And uh, if this holds and, and then the, the method converges, and of course we need to assume that this lambda k, which is the proximal parameter, is bounded away from zero. This is a standard assumption. And we have conversions, weak conversion, infinite dimensions. And uh, of course, Rockefeller proposed a lot of applications in convex programming and so on. I'm sorry. Okay. In one, one different uh, possibility is the uh, 
this is relatively new, about, uh, I think, at most 20 years uh, old, is the uh, relative error, relative error proximal point method. So the idea actually is, uh, the intuition is simple. We just, um, if you want to compute the resolvent, you can, uh, this is, a, of course, equivalent to this system. We have an inclusion in the equation. It's just the definition of this inverse. So we're going to find a pair, V, if, if you go from Z to Z plus, Z plus the next iterate, we want to find up V in T of Z plus, where lambda V plus uh, Z plus minus Z is equal to zero. So we want to solve a system like inclusion in an equation. And if you want uh, an inexact method, we have to relax. So we need to relax, we, we want to relax just the uh, both the inclusion, both the inclusion and the equation. And the error, will be relative to this displacement. Z plus, uh, is, is not exactly Z plus minus Z, we'll see, but we want this relative to this displacement. And so, how to relax the inclusion? So, um, to relax the inclusion, we, uh, we use this epsilon enlargement. So, uh, the epsilon enlargement is the outer approximation of the maximum monotone. It's not monotone, but it has a lot of interesting structures. And this is similar to monotonicity, but we have minus epsilon here. This epsilon is positive, of course, or non negative. And uh, this is an outer approximation of the maximum monotone operator and generalizes this epsilon subdifferential of uh, when t is a subdifferential of some uh, convex function. Okay? So we're going to use this t epsilon to enlarge or to relax this, uh, this inclusion. And so this is the hybrid, uh, the hybrid proximal extra gradient method. We call this HP. So the problem is to find a zero of this maximal monotone operator, and uh, we have this sigma between zero and one. This is the, will give the relative error. And the, the step one is the important one. So uh, this is actually more a framework than a method. A, but we, we know that we can put a lot of methods, specific methods in, within this framework. It helps a lot. So the step one is important. So we want to find a point in the graph of T epsilon, V, in T of epsilon K of Z tilde. So the, here we relax the inclusion, and here is the error in the equation. So this error is squared plus, plus two lambda epsilon must be, the error is relative to this displacement, Z tilde minus Z, uh, the current point. So, so the first step is find a triple like Z tilde V epsilon satisfying this. And the next iterate is not just this, this it's not this Z tilde, but it's an extra gradient step from the current step in the direction of minus V. So the motivation for this extra gradient step is the Korpolevich, uh, the Korpolevich extra gradient method for variational inequality. So it's somehow related to this uh, uh, Korpolevich contribution. And of course, if this sigma is zero, uh, if the sigma is zero, so lambda is zero because this is positive, and this is zero, so the, the, we have the exact uh, proximal point method when sigma is zero. We recover the exact method. And uh, the, of course, this method was proposed by Solodov and Zweite in 1999. And there are, there are different variations of using the projective idea and uh, different uh, relative errors, but this one uh, we are going to use today. Okay. Special instance for backward Sang, uh, Korpolevich, ADMM. I mean, special instance of the HPE or some variant of like a no Euclidean variant or something, something similar, but the idea is, is HP. And more recently, people start to study the iteration complexity of this, of this, 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 this framework, this method. And the, the first question is, what, what, what do we mean by approximate solution? Because to, to, to talk about iteration complexity, we need to like a, a family of problems. In this case is to find a zero of a maximum monotone operator and some notion of approximate solution. And uh, this was uh, introduced by Montel and Zweite in 2010. We want to find a point in the graph of uh, the epsilon enlargement for a given precision rho. Now my, my pre precision now is rho because I use the epsilon for the T epsilon. We want to find a point in the graph of T epsilon V and T epsilon of Z with V small and epsilon small, like uh, the norm of V and epsilon is less or equal than rho. We, we can use different precisions for F, V and epsilon, but let, let, let's just simplify things here. 
And of course, if this, sigma, this rho is zero, so v is zero and epsilon is zero. So we have a zero in t zero of z, but t zero is equal to t because t is maximal monotonic parade. The zero enlargement reduces to the maximal monotonic parade. This is uh, easy to prove. And of course, this is very general because uh, t is a maximal monotonic operation. But we, when we have a concrete problem like a optimization problem, a settle point of rational inequality, you can uh, reformulate this, uh, this termination criterion using the structure of the operator t, not the epsilon line of the whole thing, but uh, you can do something more precise. Okay, so this is uh, the notion of approximate solution. And uh, Montaigne's right proved the, the two, two, uh, proposed two kinds of uh, iteration complexity, one pointwise and one ergodic. So pointwise means uh, non-ergodic, we don't average. Ergodic, we average. And ergodic is uh, actually global rate of convergence. And using this global rate of convergence, you can compute the, the iteration complexity. And ergodic is better, of course. It's one over k. This is one of square root of, of k. And uh, the point-wise, we, we actually compute the point in the graph without averaging. Okay. And this is, uh, this is like, say, the, the main advantage of the point -wise, although the, the, the rate is actually worse than the, the ergodic one. So one question is if we can, uh, we can improve this. this uh, so this, is w this w w would give, like, an uh, iteration complexity one of uh, whole square and this one of a whole. So the question is if, if we can improve this one to the same order of this, like to improve this pointwise, like uh, to the same order of the order of the ergodic. And this we don't know. Uh, the best we have we did recently was a regularized version of the method. We regularized the version, and we, ar we arrive at this uh, iteration complexity. One of a whole log of one of a whole. So up to a log factor, this is one of a whole, pointwise. But we don't have a global rate of conversion. We have iteration complexity. If you give a precision, the yeah, method outputs a triple like this in that most one of a whole log of one of a whole iteration. So, and this is the best we have, but not for the HP, for our regularized version of the, of the method. Okay. Just to, to, uh, to have an idea, this is uh, the kind of uh, iteration complexity of Monteiro and Zweite. This is the point-wise. We have a point. Uh, we have uh, actually the best choice uh, uh, until the, 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 the iteration k. And v in t epsilon of z tilde, and norm of v is order of one of square root of k, and this is the epsilon, and this is the ergodic. This is a is of average. So you, I'm not going to define this because it's like boring, but you average if the z tilde the v, and this epsilon is not really an average. But, uh, it's not the average of epsilon, but it's something similar. And so this is the iteration complexity I talked about uh, in, the past, in the last slide, the previous slide. OK, so this is what I need about uh, inexact uh, proximal point methods. And uh, so let, 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 let's talk now, let, now let's talk about uh, uh, decomposition or, or splitting. So Spinger in uh, AIDS proposed this problem. Instead of a monotonic inclusion problem, zero of t of x, you give uh, t in the subspace, v. So you want to find a pair in y in t of x, the prime of variable in v, and the dual in v pair, the orthogonal complement. And uh, of course, if he is the whole space, this problem reduced to find a zero of t. Okay. One interesting instance of this problem is to find a sum of uh, a zero of a sum of a maximum monotonic operator. Z in the sum of Ti of x. And of course, this is equivalent to find this yi, and the sum is zero. Uh, x1 equal to x2 equal to xm. So in this case, v is this, uh, like the diagonal. And vpep, of course, is uh, this, uh, the vectors. Of course, now our space is h uh, to the power of m. We have m components. And uh, the v pair is just the sum 0, and the operator t is just, just the direct product of the m operators. And uh, this problem is an instance of, uh, of this one. 
And this is the partial inverse method of Spinger um, for this problem, this abstract problem, not for the sum one, but the abstract problem. So it, the traits are, we have two traits, like one in V and one in V pep, X in V and Y in V pep. And uh, the step one, we have to find, like, we have to find this X tilde, Y tilde, satisfying this inclusion. And uh, this is the good recurrent step. Uh, X K minus one, Y K minus one. And you have to satisfy this inclusion, this sum. So if lambda is one, so this is y tilde in t of x tilde. So this is a proc step. If the operator t, uh, the resolvent is computable, you know how to compute step one for lambda equal to one. But ot otherwise, it's not clear how to do this. And Spinger pointed out this, uh, this issue in his, uh, in his paper in the eights. And the next iterate is just to, just to project this x tilde in v in this y in v pep. But uh, again, this step one depends on computing the resolvent of t for lambda equal to one. When lambda is different of one, it's not clear how. And this is what I observed here. And uh, so how is being arrived at this uh, in this uh, uh, proximal-like methods and so on? So he proposed this uh, partial inverse operator of a monotone operator. So the, this is a definition. This equivalence means a definition. So uh, we have a maximum monotone operator T and V, we define the partial inverse of T with respect to V. So a point is in the graph if and only if this inclusion holds. So we are exchanging the, 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 comp the, the projection to the orthogonal complement. This is because uh, V decomposes as the P of V plus P pair of V. But now we have P pair of Z. And the PPEP of uh, the projection onto the orthogonal complement of V is in, in this, this side. So it just, we just exchanged the, 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 the projection onto this uh, orthogonal complement. And this, this TV is a maximal monotone operator. It's a maximum, this is beautiful, it's a maximal monotone operator. And if you find a zero of this maximal monotone operator, actually we solve the problem. Because if V is zero, this goes away, and this goes away, and we have uh, this y is in v pair, and this x is in v. So we solved our problem, finding a zero of some maximal monotone operator. And the Spinger's partial inverse method, this algorithm here, is just the proximal point method applied to tv. And so we have all, everything for free, like conversions, uh, from Rockefeller's work, uh, conversions, and uh, anything else. OK. And this is the Spinger's operator splitting. When V is that has the, the, the specific structure, like the diagonal, V pair sum is 0, and the T is the direct product of the operators. And so here we give a x0. And so we, when we give a x0, we are uh, actually giving a big vector, like x0, 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 because v is this uh, subspace. We are working in h to the power of m. And this y1, ym is in v pep, so the sum is 0. And here are the, the procs of, uh, in this case, lambda is 1. For the Ken position, it doesn't work a lambda different of 1. Lambda is 1. So we have to compute the proc. So this x tilde is just the resolvent applied to this, to this current step. So we compute step one. And here are the projections. So we project to, to get this xk. And here it is just a projection onto this v pet with the, the point minus the projection on v. So this is, uh, uh, we update the dual variable y. So this is uh, the composition. If you know how to compute the, the resolvent of uh, each ti in Kabin from Anton Porlo, and uh, Spinger's operator splitting. So what we want to do here is to combine this uh, inexact framework with this partial inverse to try to obtain something inexact. Okay, uh, inexact version of the Spinger's operator splitting. Well, but I'm, as I mentioned uh, uh, 
in this slide, it just works for lambda 1, when the proximal step size is 1. What about when it's different of 1? So, uh, Philip Mahe, Wally Butch, and Tao, this, they proposed this, what they call the SPDG, the scalar proximal decomposition on the graph. So, they studied the, what they call the, pro, the proximal decomposition on the graph, and this is the scalar. So now, now, I'm, uh, now let's, let's, let's use gamma because uh, this, is not, this sounds like a, pro, a proximal parameter, but it actually it's a scaling. But it sounds like so. So we have, uh, this is, if gamma is one, this is the Spinger's partial inverse. But now we have a gamma here, so we give up, uh, the, we, can put the, the, we can put the resolvent with gamma different of one. But we have also gamma here. This, Gamma here plays an important role in this, makes things work well. And uh, to update, the, the step two is the same. It's just projection on V, this, this X tilde, and, uh, and V pair with the Y tilde to get the new iterate. But we have gamma here and here, okay? Constant, but at least it, we have uh, the possibility of using uh, this proximal parameter different of one. But they didn't use, uh, they didn't apply the partial inverse framework, but fixed point theory. They, what they proved that this, uh, this is in product space, this is an uh, iteration of some firm and non-expensive operator, and they applied this, just, uh, this framework of uh, uh, fixed point theory and so on, and it's still this way. So this is, in principle, this is different. And what we observed recently is this, we can use the partial inverse framework. So we try to do this because we want to do it in exact methods. And with fixed point theory, like we have some limitation because uh, how to do in exact iteration with fixed point theory. And what we prove is that this uh, SPDG is a, is a Spinger where applying to the operator gamma t. So you don't put the proximal parameter in front of the partial inverse, but Bef <laughs> you multiply t by gamma and apply the partial inverse and iterate the proximal point method. So this is actually uh, what is going on here in this SPDG, okay, just a scaling. And uh, well, we have proved that if t is strongly monotone in Lipschitz, so tv is strongly monotone. And of course, in this case, we have linear convergence and, uh, and so on. And this, th this, uh, this was also discussed by Rockefeller, Scaling, Spinger, uh, and uh, in this uh, in the set of variational and Lagrange in the recent in the recent paper, the, he he called the proximal decoupling algorithm, uh, and this scaling plays an uh, uh, important role uh, uh, in this uh, uh, related to the Spinger's uh, work. So. Uh, now we combine both this Spinger, SPDG, uh, relative error, and we arrive at this uh, in exact version of uh, the Spinger's uh, partial inverse method. Well, this, uh, um, this is not just a HP method applied to every sub problem, because otherwise we would have the current step here you have just the projection on, uh, on V. And uh, we don't have dual variables here, and this is important, I think it's okay. So we compute uh, now is in parallel. We fix some uh, I and compute this Y tilde, uh, X tilde, this is the proximal equation. It's like a resolvent, but in exact because we have epsilon. And this epsilon has to be like relative to this displacement, but it's not just to the HP method applied to the. And the next iterate is uh, projection V and uh, projection V pair, which is given by this uh, in this form. But we have scaling and uh, constants, proximal step size, or scaling if you want to look at it this way. Okay, so this method is a special instance of the HPE applied to this problem, when V is this uh, the diagonal, V pair, blah, 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 and T is this one. And uh, so everything comes almost for free, almost for free because uh, some separate analysis in general needed. We have a structure problem, we can improve the inclusions and uh, so on, but uh, 
for a specific problem, we, we, we can work uh, uh, more on this and, and, and try to, 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 to find better results. So a similar approach was uh, done by Regina Burashek, Claudio Sagasizaba, and Susanna Scheinberg in 2006. And they arrived in a similar method. Our method is different. It's based on a different mechanism of iteration. Both are special instances of the HP method applied to this uh, partial inverse operator. But uh, in this case, the method only converts if sigma is less than 1 of square root of 5. And so this is uh, represents some kind of limitation. Because uh, in the recent implementation of this HP, I don't know in this case, but is this HP method sigma 0.99 has, this is not the best, it's one of the best. <laughs> you can check the work of Montero, Montero Ortiz, and Zweit, and X and Miao in, in the last year. So 0.99 is, it seems to be important here, OK? OK, so our problem. Minimize the sum of fi plus phi i. This is phi a 0 of this maximum monotone operator. OK? And this is what I promised you in the file. This is a 4 backward. So this is, we give x0, uh, dual, sum is 0, sigma is 0, 1, and gamma, this is like a scaling, but it's a proximal, it sounds like proximal, like 1 over, less than 1 over L. And we compute this, this is a four step, this is the dual, you compute the proximal operator, and uh, this is the same of this relative error we proposed, and actually this is a special instance of uh, this relative error Spinger uh, we, we studied. So the, the idea is actually simple. The problem here is that this gradient of f is in the past. It's, you have to put it in the future point to have implicit iteration. And just we use a transportation. You can control the epsilon by li the linearization error. So we have Lipschitz, and this is uh, OK. A simple idea, but it works, and we have this uh, parallel for backward. Okay, and we have everything almost for free, like complexity, conversions, and so on. Okay. Okay, this is closely related to a recent uh, uh, method proposed by Ernest Hugh and Watawin, uh, proximal, 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 proximal gradient PPG, and they uh, study this, uh, apply it to distributed computer and stochastic versions, and uh, very interesting applications. This is a uh, very interesting work. I strongly. Uh, recommend. Okay, and this is the iteration complexity we get almost for free. Like we have to improve these inclusions, and we have the square root of m here. But uh, we find a point like the sum is uh, small here. We want the sum zero, and these guys are like uh, about the same if we iterate. Uh, this case large, and the sum of epsilons, epsilons is uh, one over k two. And this is their ergodic. Uh, the rate is better, but the price to pay is that here we have epsilon just in f. And here we have the epsilon to differential in both uh, uh, epsilon and phi. So the sum of these guys is this one. The sum is bounded, OK? Of course, this one is positive. These are averages. And D0 is the distance of the initial iterate to the solution set, and that is the Lipschitz constant, the square root of n. OK, these are the two main references on this subject. And in these works, of course, you can find other, the other references like Spinger's work and so on. OK, thank you. <laughs>